on World News Tonight. AUKUS Pact. Australia, the UK and US unveiled a nuclear submarine plan as China lashes out the pact. More embarrassments. HSBC shows up with a rescue deal in an effort to save SVB from the collapse. War Games. U.S. forced to intensify joint military drills in response to North Korean provocations. And curtains down. Indian divas close Lakme Fashion Week in style as they flaunt their gold and metallic outfits. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight, reporting from Colombo. Here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Good evening and you are joining us on World News. Now in San Diego, US President Joe Biden was joined by the leaders of Australia and the United Kingdom to announce the new phase of the defense agreement meant to counter China's expanding aims in the Asia-Pacific region, including providing Australia with conventionally armed nuclear-powered submarines. It's a powerful entity. U.S. President Joe Biden, flanked by the leaders of Australia and the United Kingdom, hailed an agreement to provide Australia with nuclear-powered attack submarines in a major push to stunt Chinese ambitions in the Indo-Pacific. AUKUS has one overriding objective, to enhance the stability of the Indo-Pacific amid rapidly shifting global dynamics. At a U.S. naval base in San Diego, Biden on Monday laid out the so-called AUKUS plan. With the support and approval of Congress, beginning in the early 2030s, the United States will sell three Virginia-class submarines to Australia with the potential to sell up to two more if needed, jump-starting their undersea capability a decade earlier than many predicted. The statement from the leaders said the multi-stage project would culminate with British and Australian production and operation of a trilaterally developed vessel based on Britain's next-generation design that would be built in the UK and Australia and include cutting-edge U.S. technologies. An Australian defense official said the project would cost the country $245 billion U.S. dollars by 2055. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. This is a powerful partnership. For the first time ever, it will mean three fleets of submarines working together across both the Atlantic and Pacific, keeping our oceans free, open and prosperous for decades to come. China, which has been building islands and airstrips and expanding its military presence in the South China Sea, has condemned AUKUS as an illegal act of nuclear proliferation. These boats will not have any nuclear weapons of any kind on them. Some significant questions remain about the pact. The U.S. has strict curbs on the extensive technology sharing needed for the project. And it's not yet clear just how long it will take for Washington to deliver the submarines. China has hit out at the U.S., U.K. and Australia over their pact to create new nuclear-powered submarines, saying they have gone further down a dangerous road. In addition to this, Chinese President Xi Jinping plans to travel to Russia to meet his counterpart Vladimir Putin as soon as next week, which could be sooner than previously expected. Plans for a visit come as China has been offering to broker peace in Ukraine, an effort that has been met with skepticism in the West given Beijing's diplomatic support for Russia. Putin said last month that a Xi visit has been agreed, though the Kremlin chief gave no date for a possible visit. China's foreign ministry did not immediately respond to a request for comment on the possibility of Xi going to Moscow. Last month, Putin hosted China's top diplomat Wang Yi on a visit to Moscow. One source said that Wang's trip to Moscow was to help prepare for Xi's visit. China and Russia struck a no-limits partnership in February of 2022 when Putin was visiting Beijing for the opening of the Winter Olympics, weeks before Russia invaded Ukraine. Two sides have continued to reaffirm the strength of their ties. She has met Putin in person 39 times since becoming president, most recently in September during a summit in Central Asia. On Monday, she wrapped up the annual session of China's parliament, the National People's Congress, during which he was unanimously confirmed in a president-breaking third term as president. It is a dark day for climate activism everywhere as the Biden administration has approved the massive willow oil drilling project in Alaska, which is a decades-long oil drilling venture in the National Petroleum Reserve, angering climate advocates and setting the stage for a court challenge.
The Biden administration is approving the massive $7 billion oil and gas drilling Willow Project in Alaska, drawing cheers from Alaskan officials and the oil industry, but criticism from environmental advocates. The decision, announced Monday by the Interior Department, follows an aggressive 11th-hour campaign from opponents who had argued the ConocoPhillips project in northwestern Alaska conflicts with President Joe Biden's highly publicized efforts to fight climate change and rapidly shift to cleaner sources of energy. To reduce environmental risk, the Interior Department says it only approved a trimmed-down version of the plan, three drill sites and less surface infrastructure than originally proposed not fulfilling ConocoPhillips' wish to build up five drill sites, dozens of miles of roads, seven bridges, and pipelines. The agency said the smaller scope will reduce the impact on habitats for species like polar bears and yellow-billed loons. The fate of the Willow Project has been closely looked at by Alaskan officials, oil and gas groups, and green groups, as Biden seeks to balance his goals of decarbonizing the U.S. economy while also increasing domestic fuel supplies to keep prices low. Alaska's elected officials say the project will create hundreds of jobs and bring billions of dollars in revenue to state and federal coffers, and they are prepared to defend it in court. Now the blame game is on for who caused Silicon Valley Bank's collapse and the tech sector is pointing the finger at SVB CEO Greg Becker for allowing his company to go down in history as the second biggest U.S. banking failure on record. U.S. President Joe Biden says his country will do whatever is needed and vows stiffer bank regulations to tame concerns stemming from a string of bank failures. However, after SVB collapsed, sparking panic in Britain over its key customers in the technology and life sciences sectors, the U.S. UK arm of failed US lender Silicon Valley Bank has been bought by HSBC for a nominal £1 in a rescue deal. The sale overseen by the Bank of England and the Treasury. Averting a potential crisis for Britain's tech sector, HSBC has purchased a UK arm of troubled lender Silicon Valley Bank for the symbolic price of £1. The dramatic fire sale concluded after a weekend of feverish talks between the British Prime Minister and the Bank of England. The UK Finance Minister says with the sale of the bank, depositors will be able to access their accounts as normal and that no taxpayers' money ended up being used. The UK arm of SVB had about 7.5 billion euros worth of deposits and loans of about 6.2 billion euros. HSBC's group CEO, Noel Quinn, said the deal was good for the bank. This acquisition makes excellent strategic sense for our business in the UK. It strengthens our commercial banking franchise and enhances our ability to serve innovative and fast-growing firms, including in the technology and life science sectors in the UK and internationally. In a statement, the Bank of England sought to reassure the public, saying the wider UK banking system remains safe, sound and well capitalised. Unlike the U.S., the British government has not announced plans to introduce broader measures to shore up its banking sector. Now, just hours before today's missile launch, Washington said it's still studying what the North claims to be submarine-launched cruise missiles fired over the weekend. And it warned that North Korean provocations only push the U.S. to reinforce security commitment. Tonight, the U.S. and South Korea launching their biggest joint military exercises in years, readying themselves to defend against an evolving North Korean threat. North Korea wasting no time in retaliating. Official state media saying the North launched two cruise missiles on the eve of the drills from a submarine off North Korea's coast, claiming they flew for two hours in figure eights over the Sea of Japan. South Korea's military confirming they tracked at least one missile launch from the north, saying they're working with U.S. intelligence to analyze it. The test launched a pointed reminder of the escalating security threat from North Korea, which conducted more than 70 missile tests last year, the most ever. As the U.S. intelligence community predicts Pyongyang may soon conduct its seventh nuclear test continues its efforts to steadily expand and enhance its nuclear and conventional capabilities targeting the United States and our allies. U.S. National Intelligence Director Avril Haines saying North Korea is using aggression to reshape the region. 
The joint U.S.-South Korean military drills are the largest in five years, ever since former President Trump scaled them back as he pursued diplomacy with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. They'll involve some of the roughly 28,500 U.S. troops stationed in South Korea, plus others deployed from Japan and the U.S. Kim Jong-un says the exercises are proof it's South Korea and its ally, the United States, provoking tensions. His military treating the joint drills as rehearsals for an invasion of his country. Amid the specter of nuclear war, Seoul's mayor telling that South Korea should consider going nuclear itself as a deterrent, a position at odds with the U.S. stance that the whole Korean peninsula should be denuclearized. Tonight, the region on high alert as the war games begin, bracing for potentially even more North Korean retaliation. That's going for a short commercial break. You're watching World News. Welcome back to World News Tonight. Now Cyclone Freddy battered central Mozambique after making landfall for a second time in a month, breaking records for the duration and strength of tropical storms in the southern hemisphere. A grim search for victims was underway on Monday in the Malawian city of Blantyre after tropical storm Freddy tore through the region for the second time in a month. The storm left at least 99 dead in Malawi, while in neighboring Mozambique, the full extent of the damage and loss of life is not yet clear. So far, we have recovered 30 bodies, says this rescuer. We are still looking for more victims. At least 60 bodies were brought to the central hospital in Blantyre, according to Doctors Without Borders. Another 200 were being treated in hospital for injuries. For others, the loss is starting to set in. It was too bad in the night, but now that it is daytime, I can feel the loss, says this man, who said his neighbors' homes were gone, with some of their family members missing. Freddy is one of the strongest storms ever recorded in the Southern Hemisphere. It could be the longest lasting tropical cyclone, according to the World Meteorological Organization. It pummeled central Mozambique on Saturday before moving inland towards Malawi with torrential rains that caused landslides. The total number killed by Storm Freddy in Mozambique, Malawi and Madagascar since it first made landfall last month is now around 136. Officials have warned flooding and destroyed crops in Mozambique could raise the risk of waterborne disease. It's had more than a year's worth of rainfall in the past four weeks. And in Malawi, UN agencies say what is already the deadliest cholera outbreak in its history could now get worse. The Islamic regime has pardoned 22,000 people arrested during recent nationwide demonstrations. The protests flared up following Masa Amini's death in police custody. 22,000 people who took part in anti-government protests have been pardoned in Iran, according to judicial authorities. Speaking on Monday, the country's judiciary chief, Golam Hossein Mosseni Ejei, said 82,000 people have been pardoned, including 22,000 people who participated in the protests. He did not specify over what period the pardons were granted. It is also not known if or when the people had been charged. State media reported in February that Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei had pardoned, quote, tens of thousands of prisoners, including some arrested in the protests. The protests swept across a conservative country after the death of Masa Amini, while in the custody of the country's morality police last September. The demonstrations have been one of the boldest challenges to the Islamic Republic since the 1979 revolution. Pfizer is spending about $43 billion to reach deeper into new cancer treatments that target tumor cells while sparing surrounding healthy tissue. Cancer drug maker CGEN is being acquired by Pfizer for $43 billion. The deal was announced Monday. It's Pfizer's largest since its acquisition of Wyeth for $67 billion in 2009. The pharmaceuticals giant hopes the new deal will bulk up its portfolio of cancer treatments. 
It's been on the hunt for takeovers in a bid to offset big drops in revenue as patents expire for some of its top drugs. Pfizer has also seen the boost from the global health crisis fade away. Now it expects more than $10 billion in sales from CGen in 2030. The Washington-based firm is a pioneer in new types of medicines designed to precisely target cancers while sparing healthy cells. Pfizer rival Merck and Co. was in advanced talks to take over CGen last year. However, that deal collapsed amid antitrust concerns. Now Pfizer says it will pay $229 per CGen share to seal the takeover. That's a premium of nearly a third over Friday's closing price. We have some good news for you. Farmers in southwestern Korea are counting on their newly grown lettuce to drive up their profits because these are Hugh Harang, a local variety rich in properties that make you fall asleep. They're perfect as a source of natural sleep aids. This is a type of lettuce called hukarang. They're grown locally and organically as part of a joint venture between a group of farmers and the Cholanamdo Province Agricultural Agency. Farmers say they've chosen to grow lettuce because they're cost-effective and show higher yields compared to other vegetables. A total of 11 designated farms specialize in producing these lettuces, which have shown to contain 24 times the amount of lactucin compared to normal kinds a type of natural property abundant in lettuce leaves known to have sedative effects. That's why in Korea, it is said that eating lettuce makes you sleepy. The lettuces grown here are sourced for various health supplements and products sold in more than a dozen department stores nationwide, and the farmers believe there's an even bigger opportunity to be seized here. There are currently over 20 ways the lettuce can be used, from its stems to the leaves, in making a variety of products ranging from tea to juice, powder, and fermented jelly. The products are also being shipped to China, Japan, and France, and are being ready to be sent to around a dozen more countries. Locally, farmers say they're hoping their products can benefit some 640,000 people who struggle to sleep at night. The market size of lettuce-based natural sleep aids is expected to grow at least 5% every year, and they believe that hikaran can be the main source. Welcome back, and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Drone footage of the landslide aftermath showed the destruction caused in a housing area located in a high-risk zone at the capital city of the Amazonas state in the Brazilian Amazon. Four of the mortal victims were adults and four were children, and three survivors were rescued. Officials were to tame a wildfire raging in the northeastern region of Argentina that has consumed around 3,000 hectares. Footage captured by an eyewitness traveling near the fire showed huge smoke clouds billowing from the fire. Two people were killed and nine injured after being struck by a van in the Canadian town of Amiki, Quebec. Police spokeswoman said the circumstances of the collision were still being investigated. The driver of the van has been arrested for a deadly hit and run. Homes have been swept away from their foundations in Peru after powerful cyclone Yaku unleashed torrents of rain in Peru's northern region. In the province of Lima, houses next to the swollen Shilon River were swept away after water levels rose dramatically. India maintained their vice-like grip on the Border Gavaskar Trophy with a 2-1 series victory against Australia after the fourth and final test ended in a stalemate. Kane Williamson helped India's hopes with New Zealand pulling off a last ball thriller, dashing Sri Lanka's hopes of making the WTC final with a 2-0 series sweep. And that is all from us here at World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we keep you up to date with the latest from around the world. In case you missed any of the stories tonight, you can always watch the whole program on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. Now we leave you tonight with Bollywood actresses who brought down the curtains down at the four-day Lakme Fashion Week in Mumbai. Thank you for watching. Have a great night. <laughs>